Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to look at a perfectly competitive firm and the short-run decisions that they can make in terms of whether to maintain uh, running their business or eventually shutting down and exiting the industry. Here we have uh, a simple model to illustrate the various prices that a perfectly competitive firm might be facing and the decision that they'll make to whether continue to run their business or to either reduce their variable costs or just to shut down and exit, period. Um, we can see that our, we are measuring the revenue, the price, the costs of the firm on the y-axis and the quantity of output on the x-axis. We have our upward sloping supply curve. S1 equals our marginal cost of production. <clears throat> and we know that it has this kind of backwards J shape as a result of the law of diminishing marginal returns, which is discussed in another video. And we see that the um, supply curve intersects with the average total cost curve and the average variable cost curves at their lowest point. And we also notice that the AVC starts to approach the ATC curve since we've talked about in a previous video how our average fixed cost of production gets smaller and smaller and smaller as we generate more and more output. All right, so let's take a look at the firm and the decisions that they'll make. We're gonna assume for this model that the objective of the firm is to maximize profit, which is achieved where the marginal revenue equals the marginal cost. And again, this is discussed in another video, the reasons why um, firms would follow this rule in theory in order to maximize their profit. So the firm that's perfectly competitive must accept the price that is generated by the industry. And let's start at a price of P1. P1 becomes the perfectly elastic price that this firm must accept. And we know that the, uh, this is their demand curve, which is equal to their average revenue curve, which is also equal to their marginal revenue curve. So where MR equals MC, which is at point A, the firm would be maximizing profit. We can also see that the firm here is generating supernormal profit. So P1 is their average revenue and their average total cost at a quantity of Q1 is highlighted at this point. So we can highlight the supernormal or abnormal revenue that would be generated by the firm. This would be their cost of production. We'd come across. It is less than the price that they're charging. And so we can see here that the firm at a quantity of Q1 where they're maximizing profit, where MR equals MC is generating abnormal profit. So of course, they will continue to run their business um, and collect that abnormal profit. So let's make a note about that, okay? So we see that at a price of P1, since the price is greater than the average total costs, the firm is generating abnormal profit, also known as supernormal profit. So they are incentivized to continue to um, run their, their company. Let's say that the price falls from P1 to P2. So the firm will have to decrease the quantity supplied all right, from point A to point B. Because at point B, we know that demand is equal to the AR. So we'll say this is D2 equal to AR2 is equal to MR2. So this is where MR equals MC at point B. They're at that point. And this is what we would call the break-even price. So at a price of P2, we see that price is equal to their average total costs. And we know that price equals AR, which is equal to ATC. So that is their break-even price. All right. Here they are earning what we would call zero economic profit. Their average revenue is covering their average total cost. Their revenue is covering their cost. Their price is covering their cost of production. And we want to remember that in economics that the cost of production includes the implicit cost. Uh, I'm sorry, their explicit costs. Their explicit costs are the resources that they don't own. 
the land, labor, capital, or entrepreneurship that they don't own, and they're paying a wage or rent or interest or profit for that. And the cost also includes their implicit costs, the opportunity costs of the resources that they do own. So the firm has every incentive to keep running their business um, and they're earning normal profit. And they have no reason to um, do anything other than that. So things are continuing to be good for the firm. And we know that uh, later on we'll see that firms in perfect competition gravitate towards normal profit. What happens if the price continues to fall? Let's say it falls from uh, P2 to P3, right? And now we're at point C. The firm will have to decrease the quantity supplied from point B to point C in order to maximize profit at this point. Um, and we're going to remember that now we're at D3, which is equal to AR3, which is equal to MR3. So the firm is operating at profit maximization at point C, and here they're generating a loss. Their average revenue is less than their average total cost at this point. So that would incur a loss, and we'll highlight that loss here. So this is the average revenue going up to their average total cost. The costs are exceeding the revenue, and this rectangular area is reflective of the loss that the firm is incurring. Even though the firm is generating a loss, the firm will continue to run, um, and in the short run, maybe they have the ability to reduce their variable costs. Maybe they're able to reduce um, their variable costs by firing labor. That would have the effect of shifting ATC downward and AVC downward and MC downward. So we're able to see that the firm, although they are in the uh, short run and incurring a loss, that in uh, at point C, they are able to cover some of their fixed costs, such as their rent or the interest on their loans, and all of their variable cost, which is the distance from the x-axis to the ABC curve. Uh, the firm in the short run has some options available in terms of finding ways to reduce their variable costs by perhaps firing labor, um, reducing some of their input resource prices by renegotiating with their suppliers, and there's some options available. And if they're able to reduce their variable costs, then the ABC curve would shift downward, pushing their ATC curve downward, which would also push their MC curve downward to hopefully reach normal profit. So yes, the firm is generating a loss at point C, but they have some options available to reduce their variable costs and hit normal profit or break even again, and to be able to pay all of their variable costs and a portion of their fixed costs. So there's no reason for the firm to shut down and exit. Now let's assume that the price continues to fall. The price set by the industry, price falls from P3 to P4, that becomes a perfectly elastic price that the firm must accept. Price falls, demand curve falls to D4, which is equal to AR4, which is equal to MR4. All right, uh, at this price of point D, the firm is still generating a significant loss. That loss is the size of their entire fixed costs. So we can illustrate that again here. This is the price that the firm is charging, but these are their costs at that quantity of output. So here we see significant losses by the firm, and that loss is essentially reflective of the firm unable to pay any of their fixed costs. We know that the distance between ATC and AVC is the value of their fixed costs, and the firm is not able to pay perhaps rent or interest on their loans. They're, they are able to pay their variable costs, the distance from point D down to the x-axis. They can pay perhaps their labor, their electricity bill, um, and other variable costs, but they cannot pay their fixed costs. So this becomes the firm's um, shutdown price, their short-run shutdown price. This is the last price they're willing to accept before they close their business and exit the industry completely. Okay, And let's just make a, a couple of notes about that. So we know that at a price of P3, at a price of P3, um, the firm is making a loss. All right, and they're generating a loss because their ATC, their average total cost curve, is greater 
than the price of the receipt, which is still greater than an average variable cost. And that gives them some options to find ways to reduce the variable cost to at least break even uh, and able to pay their variable costs and a portion of their fixed costs. So they continue to produce, right? They're gonna to continue to produce. Looking at point D at a price of P4, this is important because here they're at minimum, right? Price is equal to minimum AVC. And this is what we would call their short run shutdown price. That in the short run this is the last price that they're willing to accept because at this point they're not able to pay their fixed costs. And in the short run, they cannot reduce their fixed costs. So there's no option here to reduce their fixed costs and they're only able to pay their variable costs. So the firm is perhaps not able to pay rent or not able to pay their interest on their loan. So the business at this point is, is hurting. All right. Um, what happens if price continues to fall to P5? All right, they're at P5, they're gonna maximize revenue where MR equals MC. All right, we're at D5 now. This is at average revenue five, which is equal to marginal revenue five. They're going to continue to decrease the quantity supply from point D to point E. We're at point E at a quantity of Q5, MR equals MC. Profit maximization is being achieved at that point. We see significant losses. And we can highlight that. So this is the average revenue, right? And these are their average total costs. So this is a significant loss for the firm. They're not able to pay any of their fixed costs, the distance between ATC and ABC, and they're not able to pay some of their variable costs. They're not able, perhaps able to pay some of the wages that they owe. So the firm will need to shut down and exit the industry. Okay? One last point to make. Um, the long run shutdown price. The long run shutdown price would be achieved at where the firm is operating at minimum ATC, okay? Which is point B. The long run shutdown at point B is at minimum ATC because since we're in the long run and uh, we can eliminate the ABC curve, all right? All costs are variable. There are no fixed costs. And that would mean essentially that the ATC curve in the long run is equal to the AVC curve. Remember, we're in the long run. We're assuming that we're in the long run. There are no fixed costs. So if the firm in the long run is at minimum ATC, which is equal to AVC, that's the last price they're willing to accept before they shut down and exit the industry. If the price were to fall below point B in the long run, there's nothing else the firm can do to reduce their variable costs. All of their costs are at minimum. And so the firm would have to shut down and completely exit the industry, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just explain this, perhaps as we would on a paper one exam, and uh, that will be it. So as can be seen, we have a graph, graph A, illustrating a perfectly competitive firm in the short run and the decisions that they would make based on price. We're measuring revenue, price, and costs on the x-axis, the quantity of output on the y-axis. And we have a price that's set by the industry at P1, which becomes a perfectly elastic price that the firm must accept, uh, which is D1, which is equal to the average revenue one, which is equal to the marginal revenue one. Assuming that the firm wants to maximize profit where MR equals MC, that would be achieved at point A. And we see that point A, that the average revenue is greater than their average costs, right, which we see right here. So the firm at P1 with a price greater than ATC is generating abnormal profit, also supernormal profit. So the firm has the incentive to maintain production. But over time, perhaps the price falls from P1 to P2. That becomes a perfectly elastic price that the firm must accept. D2 equal to AR2 equal to MR2. And for the firm to produce where MR equals MC, they're gonna decrease their quantity supply from point A to point B. All right, at point B, they're maximizing profit we notice that AR is now equal to ATC, so they're breaking even. They're at their break-even price, and they're generating zero economic profit. But we want to note 
that even though their average revenue is equal to their average total cost, the average total cost includes their implicit and explicit costs. So the firm has every incentive to maintain production. Let's say price falls from P2 to P3. That becomes a perfectly elastic price that the firm must accept. D3 equals AR3 equal to MR3. In order to profit maximize, they're going to decrease the quantity supply from point B to point C. At point C, they're maximizing profit, but you notice that the ATC curve is greater than the AR curve. So the firm is generating a loss in the short run. Although the firm is generating a loss in the short run, they have some options available in terms of being able to reduce their variable costs. They might fire some labor or fire some other resources that are not needed that are variable. And that would have the effect of shifting ABC down, shifting ATC down, shifting MC down, so that the firm hopefully can achieve uh, a break-even price. So they will continue to produce. Let's say price falls from P3 to P4. Again, that becomes a perfectly elastic price that the firm must accept. D4 equal to AR4 equal to MR4. The firm, in order to profit maximize, will reduce the quantity supplied from point C to point D or from Q3 to Q4. And at point D, even though they're profit maximizing, they have achieved their short run shutdown price. Right? Price is now equal to minimum AVC. This is the last price the firm will, is willing to accept before they completely exit the, in, the industry. And we see that at this point, point D, that the average total cost curve is greater than their average revenue. And also we see that none of their fixed costs are covered. None of their fixed costs are covered. Um, but they're able to cover their variable costs. So this is problematic for the firm because they're not able, not able to pay rent, perhaps not able to pay interest on some of their um, loans. If price were to continue to fall from P4 to P5, that becomes a perfectly elastic price that the firm must accept. Uh, D5 equal to AR5 equal to MR5. The firm will decrease the quantity supplied from D to E or from Q4 to Q5. And um, they're profit maximizing at point E, but we see that at point E, ATC is greater than AR, and that the firm is not able to pay any of their fixed costs, and they're not able to pay some of their variable costs. So at this point, the firm would shut down and exit the industry as they're not able to co cover any of their fixed costs and some of their variable costs. In terms of the long run, the long run shutdown price would be at minimum ATC because ATC is equal to AVC since there are no fixed costs. So point B in the long run would be the last price that the firm would be willing to accept before they shut down and exit the industry. Okay, so I hope um, that is clear. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.